Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm not buying books this year. Welcome back to my Romance 101 series. Today we're talking about decoding romance covers. So a romance cover can tell you a lot about what might be inside the book without ever even really looking at the back. It can tell you a lot about the subgenre. It can also tell you a lot about the heat level of the book. If you're not familiar with those terms or any of the other terms that pop up in this video, check out the earlier videos in the series. I'd recommend starting with the vocabulary video and then moving on to the subgenre video, and then you can come back here and watch the rest of this one. So let's start with subgenres. Um, there are a lot of romance subgenres. Today I'm going to talk about five specific subgenres. Let's start with contemporary romance covers. So this one is clearly a contemporary romance cover. You can see this is Heat Exchange by Shannon Stacy. This depicts a fireman in modern firefighting gear with um, a naked male torso on the cover. This is also a contemporary romance, though I would pu put this book more in the erotic romance category. Part of the way you can tell this is that, well, they're not wearing a lot of clothes. <laughs> If you'll note, the heroine is in her bra and the hero's not wearing a shirt. This is also a contemporary romance, but this book is romantic suspense. And the way that I can kind of tell this without even really knowing anything about the author or the title, this is Under the Wire by Helen K. Diamond, that is that the hero right here is holding a gun. Not to say that characters on other book covers aren't necessarily going to be holding guns on occasion, but chances are if the hero's holding a gun, it's a romantic suspense. Speaking of characters holding weapons on covers, this is Magic Slays by Alona Andrews. I just grabbed the first Kate Daniels book I could find because I knew they always have these kinds of covers. You can kind of see that she's holding a sword here on the cover. Generally speaking, if the heroine on the cover is holding a sword, this is going to be paranormal romance or urban fantasy. Now, why wouldn't this be romantic suspense? I don't know. That's just the way the covers are coded. Generally speaking, man with a gun on the cover, romantic suspense, girl with a sword on the cover, paranormal or urban fantasy. Then there are historical romance covers. I'm sure you've seen these. These are not a mystery to most people. So for example, this is The Duke's Guide to Correct Behavior by Megan Frampton. You can see she's wearing a very frilly dress and he's not wearing a shirt. Very typical for modern historical romance covers. However, even if it's not Avon, which is well known for this sort of cover, this book is by Kensington. This is Let Us Dream, but oh, actually this one might have been self-published. I think her other books are Kensington, but I think this one's self-published. Um, but this is Let Us Dream by Alyssa Cole. This is another historical romance. And as you can see, woman with a pretty frilly dress on the cover. Not to say, again, that there aren't books that have frilly dresses on the cover that indicate contemporaries, but chances are, if you're looking for a historical romance and you're scanning the shelves, if you see a pretty dress, it's probably historical. There are exceptions. <laughs> um, in this particular case, this is The Spy Master's Lady by Joanna Bourne. This is historical romantic suspense. Now, this doesn't necessarily tell you that this is going to be historical romantic suspense. You can tell it's historical just from the way he's dressed, but no gun, no knife, no sword. Hard to tell. You'd need to flip this over and read the back and see that he's a spy. And then finally, my favorite, Gentle Rogue by Joanna Lindsay. This cover tells you nothing. <laughs> this cover doesn't tell you it's historical. I mean, you might guess that it's historical romance, but it could well be Georgette Hare or Jane Austen. This does not look like a Joanna Lindsay book. Joanna Lindsay wrote a pirate romance. The hero in this book is a pirate. Why is there a house on the cover? The whole book takes place on a boat. Sometimes covers are not helpful at all. So let's talk a little bit about heat levels in romance. So the easiest way of determining a heat level is to take a look at category romances. Um, category romances are lines that are very um, restrictive in terms of their content and the types of stories that will be told in each individual line. So for example, Harlequin write, I mean Harlequin publishes a um, line called Harlequin Heartwarming in which there is no even implied sex. So this is completely sweet, chaste, 
those sorts of clean, you'll hear those sorts of terms. Um, there's no, like I said, no implied sex. Um, the same is also true of Love, in, Love Inspired, which is also has religious themes. Now, Harlequin Romance, which would be sort of up one level, is typically closed door. So those may have sexual encounters, but they probably will not be on the page. Um, I will put, um, I have covers that I, I'm not going to talk about, but I'll, I'll put them up there, um, because <laughs> those aren't lines that I read. I tend to be a higher heat reader. So for me, um, I picked up this book, Harlequin Kiss, um, Whose Bed Is It Anyway? I read this last month in January. Um, I wasn't sure about this one. I thought this might be kisses only. Um, but the codes that the cover is is showing me um, with two people who are in, at least one of them is, is, is wearing fairly skimpy clothing and they're in a bed, seemed to imply it might be higher heat. And as it turned out, it was. Um, I since have found out that this line, though it's not being published anymore, um, was split between two books that were less sexy and two books that were more sexy. So that um, would be kind of a good way of checking whether you think this might be a super sexy book or a less sexy book. Um, this sort of code also applies to the Kimani line, which is also not being published anymore. But if you find those on bookstore shelves, which you still can, um, that's another good way of looking at um, what, what heat level those might be. Um, then we have Harlequin Blaze. Now these um, are also not being published. This is not very helpful. Um, but the covers for Blaze look an awful lot like the covers for Harlequin Dare. So in terms of higher heat levels, you would see maybe Harlequin Desire, Harlequin Presents, Harlequin Blaze, or Harlequin Dare. Dare being the sexiest. Um, and then here's a, a, a more recent Harlequin Presents cover as well, just so you can see what those look like. Those would definitely have on-page sex. And it's nice to be able to sort of look at them and make decisions based on if you're, if you're looking for a particular heat level or you just want to test the waters. Those are going to be a pretty reliable way of guessing the heat level in those books. Um, where it gets a little trickier is in single title romances. These are not part of a publisher's category line. So there's no rules as to what they can or can't have based on the publisher's guidelines. So I'm going to give you a couple of tricks. The first trick I have is to look at the colors on the cover of the book. I'm going to throw a couple of erotic romance covers up there. Um, as you can see, the colors are grungier. They're grays and blacks and reds, sort of colors that we think of, at least in the Western world, as being kind of sexy. Now, lower heat books will tend to have more pastel colors, and I'll throw some of those up as well. Um, as you can see, the design of those covers is substantially different. You can also look at the fonts. My friend Brie, who's one half of the um, Kit Rocha duo, uh, who said when I was talking about this with people on Twitter prepping for this video, um, that if you see a, a, a stark sans serif font, with a scripty, pretty, like written font. That is ebook code for bad boy, good girl, ultra filthy, taboo romance. And initially I was a little skeptical because I was like, what, really, are you sure? Because that doesn't really seem like a thing to me. I went and looked and she's absolutely right. So I'll, I'll rotate a few of those up here as well. The next way is to look at the pictures on the cover. So for example, if you have um, a book that has, for example, jewelry on the cover, or ties, or bras, generally speaking, this kind of cover is going to indicate a higher heat book. In fact, it's likely to indicate a BDSM erotic romance a la Fifty Shades of Grey, which sort of popularized this cover type. Um, this book actually happens to be erotica. This isn't even necessarily erotic romance because it doesn't necessarily have a happy ending. Um, and the only way that you would know that is by looking on the back where it says erotica. In an entirely different vein, a lower heat book, sort of maybe along the lines of less descriptive sex or closed door sex or maybe even no sex, um, would be books that have furniture on the cover, whether they're Adirondack chairs or wicker chairs or picnic blankets spread with food. 
those will generally indicate that this is not going to be a book with a ton of erotic content. Now let's talk about the bulk of romance covers. Let's talk about ones with people. Often, if you see a woman alone on a cover, that's not necessarily going to indicate a very high heat book. This is not a foolproof method, but if you see a book like this one by Barbara Freethy, woman standing on the edge of a beach, this might be women's fiction, it might be romance. Again, look at the back. That said, if you see a woman alone on a cover in a shawl or in a bonnet, this is probably going to indicate a, a completely no sex book. It may also be inspirational. Now, if you see a man alone on a cover, that is generally going to indicate that the book will have some sexual content, whether in contemporary or historical. Generally speaking, if there's a naked or semi-naked man on the cover, there will be some sex in that book. Now, it varies tremendously whether that means very descriptive erotic sex or whether that means sort of lower amounts of sex, but it's probably not going to be closed door or no sex. The last type of cover you might see with people on it is couples. And when I asked this question on Twitter, one of my librarian friends supplied that in library school they teach people who don't read romance that the more naked the couple is on the cover, the more likely the, the book is to have sexual content. For example, let's go back to Three Nights with a Rock Star. This is an erotic romance. This, is, this book is based entirely around the couple's sexual journey, and as you can see, they're quite naked on the cover. This historical, it also depicts a couple in an intimate situation. They're not quite as naked, it's probably not going to be quite as erotic, but it is probably still going to be a quite sexy book. Now this is an older example, but the rules still hold true. This is Romantic Encounter by Betty Neils. This book was republished in 1993, so this is, a, like I said, a very old book. But as you can see, these two are completely clothed, walking down the street, he's in a suit, she's in a dress, they're in public. This book has absolutely no sexual content. It has some kissing, but other than that, that's all. Now these are just general guidelines, and of course trends change. So let's talk right now about cartoon covers or illustrated covers. This book here is from the year 2000. This is Pride, Prejudice, and Jasmine Field. I love this book. I talked about this in my very, my, one of my first videos when I talked about my keeper shelf. This is a Pride and Prejudice based um, chick lit book when we were definitely calling romantic comedies of a certain strain chick lit. This book does have sexual content. Um, it isn't terribly descriptive, but it is there. Next, we have Blow Me Down by Katie McAllister. This is from 2005. This is another style of illustrated cover. This will generally indicate that the book will have some sex, but that it will be a certain level of humorous, even silly. Um, this style of cover during this period of time just indicated a certain campy style of book, particularly in the mass market format. Now I'm going to throw the kiss quotient up here. Everyone knows the kiss quotient. It came out last year. It's about an escort and a woman with autism who hires him to teach her how to fall in love and have sex. Um, it's a very sexy book uh, and it's a cartoon or illustrated cover. Um, I think we are watching the cartoon or illustrated cover change in real time. Um, what used to mean a uh, romantic comedy, fairly low heat, maybe closed door, or not terribly descriptive sex, no longer quite means that. So nowadays when you pick up a book with an illustrated cover, if you're not looking for a sexier reading experience, <laughs> reader beware, read some reviews. So if you're new to romance, I hope that's helpful and helps you decode a little bit what you might be getting out of a book that you pick up in a bookstore, in the library, or that you might be browsing on some ebook site. If you enjoyed this video, Romance 101 is an ongoing series on my channel. I post two or three episodes a month um, in this series and three episodes a week on my channel. I post three times a week on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So please consider subscribing. Have a great week. Doubt not, slay some words, 
and Lex has your back. Bye.